13 one more time. Matthew 13. Jesus actually gives two parables here within these three verses. A parable about the treasure that was hid in the field. And then, of course, the parable of the merchant seeking the finest pearls he could possibly find. Two parables in these three verses here. It says again, the kingdom of heaven, verse 44, Matthew 13, Matthew 13, verse 44. Jesus said again, the kingdom of heaven is like to a treasure hid in a field, the which when a man has found, he hides, and for joy thereof goes and sells all that he has, and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he has found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Pearls were highly valued. In fact, they were the most highly valued gems in the ancient world. And many times, pearls were bought as investments, much like diamonds are today. In the form of a pearl, a great amount of wealth could be kept in a very small place or buried in a field for safekeeping. And of course, the lesson of, these, of this one about the pearl is the fact that Jesus Christ is the pearl of great price. Amen. Because you notice there, it says, again, the kingdom of heaven like a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. And when he has found one pearl of great price, he sold all that he had and bought that. Jesus Christ is that pearl of great price. And he's worth giving up everything Amen. to have. Amen? Amen. Amen. What? Kingdom men. Amen. Part two. Maybe see. We consider the second part of our message today. I really want to look at again Pastor Tony Evans' definition of what a kingdom man is. We put it up on the screen last week, but let me just read that to you again. Is his definition of what a kingdom man is. A kingdom man is a man who visibly demonstrates the comprehensive rule of God underneath the lordship of Jesus Christ in every area of his life. I'll say that again. A kingdom man is a man who visibly demonstrates the comprehensive rule of God underneath the lordship of Jesus Christ in every area of his life. When a man comes under the lordship of Jesus Christ, this man's life is changed forever. Changed forever. And is changed forever because he cannot remain the same. Just can't remain the same because he is no longer in control. He is no longer calling the shot. And that's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Therefore, if any man, if any person, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, everything becomes new. So, the desire... To want to stay in sin slowly 
fades away. See, that's how you know you are in Christ. That desire to stay in sin slowly fades away. You say, well, Pastor, what if it ain't faded? Then you got problems. <laughs> If, 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 if the desire for, is in you to continue to stay in sin, and if you think you're okay with that, then I want you to know that is not the characteristic of a person that's in Christ. Amen. So you better check yourself and make sure you are in Christ to begin with. Because what God does is, God replaces those old sinful desires with new desires. God replaces that old sinful nature with a new nature. In other words, we now live a life which speaks to eternity. Our focus in life is now eternal and not that just which is temporal. I think about the old songwriter and he wrote this song and I remember hearing the deacons many, many years ago as I was a little kid sitting in church and they would, they would start singing this old song and it went something like this. It said, my heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fears dismay, though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim, is higher ground. Amen. And that should be the desire of every born again Christian. Amen. We ought to desire higher ground. You know, <laughs> Miller Beer boast about being the highlight. But I want you to know that stuff leads to the low life. I'm just telling you the truth. That stuff leads to the low life. And I've said it before and I'll say it many times again, that stuff has never made mud any wiser. Amen? That made the mud do some crazy things. Now, there are three things here as we talk about and consider this kingdom man. There are three things that I'm going to point out that I think define both what a kingdom man is and what a kingdom man does. Three things here. Is this on at all? I'm not. Can y'all hear me from here? Let me, let, me, let me make sure I got it. Well, it's up. There we go. Was that you or me? It wasn't me. Uh, amen. Amen. Three things I want to draw to your attention today. Three things that I see here that define what a kingdom man is and what a kingdom man does. And the first thing I want to mention here is simply this. Listen. A kingdom man puts God first in his faith. Alright? Somebody ought to say amen. amen. A kingdom man puts God first in his faith. Because you see folks, it's one thing to say I have faith in God. It's quite another thing to physically demonstrate my faith in my daily life. Because a kingdom man's faith is not just a Sunday morning faith. A kingdom man's faith shows up on his job. And while he's on his job, he holds his head up high. A kingdom man got pep in his step. Amen? And he is there on that job doing what he knows he has to do because he realizes that he actually works for his heavenly boss. That's who his real boss is. And the kingdom man recognizes 
that he actually works for his heavenly boss. And the Bible says, whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. And so, let me ask you this. How's your work ethic? How's your attitude when it comes to work? Do you get up and say, oh, man, I got to put another eight, ten hours in a day? Oh, man, I don't know if I'm going to do this anymore. And you take that attitude to work, and you walk in all slouched, barely making it on time, or a few minutes late. You know, that kind of an attitude doesn't represent your heavenly father. It really doesn't. Because remember, you work for the glory of God. That's why you work. You go to school for the glory of God. Everything that we do should be done for the glory of God. Because when that's the attitude that we have, then all of a sudden it changes everything. Because I do what I do because I want to please God. Amen. Because I realize he is the one who is ultimately in control. I get, uh, and I've told you this before, I get calls to do funerals for people I don't even know. And I told you about how a few months ago, I was asked to do a funeral for a four-month-old little girl. Four months. And, and, and I went there and prayed way ahead of time, days before I prayed, and said, Lord, these are the hard ones. These are the tough ones. I said, Lord, I really need you to give me guidance and give me direction, help me to know what you want me to say and how to do this service and how I can give some encouragement and some hope to this family. And so, and so God did, and he did it in a wonderful way. And, and I really believe God was glorified in that service. Then a couple of weeks later, I get another call to do a service for a 20-week-old stillborn man. I didn't think they would show the baby. But they had it there. 20 weeks old. No bigger than my hand. And I said, Lord, once again, help me to bring glory to you. Somebody said, when you do what you do, does what you do please God. And I try to be sure, and I want to be sure, that whatever I do, Whatever it is, in word or in deed, I want to do it all for the glory of God. And in those services, I wanted to be sure that God got the glory. Because it is in times like those, those times, that's when your faith is really tested. And you really can get an idea of what you got and what you laid out. And so... A kingdom man simply puts God first in his faith. And he puts God first in everything that he does. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Now, number two. A kingdom man not only puts God first in his faith, but watch this. He also puts God first in his finances. Amen. 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 <laughs> if I got a Q-tip, my ear got stopped up there. He also puts God first in his finances. Before he does his other obligations, he first makes sure that he takes care of his spiritual obligations. Because you see, a kingdom man realizes that it's not his money in the first place. Amen? Because if God doesn't give you the strength 
You can't work. So, not only does God give you the job, he also gives you the way for you to be able to work the job. Amen. Because a job is of little value if you can't work it. It ain't going to do you much good. And what a lot of people do is they get a good job and then forget about the one who got them the job. That's what a lot of times we do. You forget about the one who made it all possible. Then some even have the attitude, well, what I do with my money is my business. <laughs> oh, foolish one. Without God, you can do nothing. You see, I would rather give it to God than have God come and collect it. I'm just trying to save you some heartache. I'm trying to save you some trouble. Put God first. Put him first in your finances. That's what a kingdom man does. You might be able to avoid man's collections efforts. I'm telling man no. Ooh. Thank the Lord for calling ID. <laughs> You might be able to avoid man's collection efforts, but when God comes to collect, you're going to be in a bad way. Amen. You see, folks, here's what I believe. Here's what I believe. I believe the giving of the tithe helps me keep the right perspective about money. Did you hear that? Yes. The giving of the tithe helps me keep the right perspective about money. Because when you have the wrong perspective about money, that's when your money gets funny. You don't have the right perspective. But when you give and you put God first, and you give that which God says, give that. And, 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 and God says, Try me. Amen. God says, prove me. It, it, it's almost like he's daring us. Right. And I will bless you in ways you couldn't imagine. Right. So what happens is, if I hold back, guess what God does? He holds back. Amen. Amen. Oh, Pastor, I don't think we're going to make it. It's just too hard. We, we just, we just, there's always too much month at the end of the money. I don't think we're going to make it. Well, where's God in this? Where's God in this? Duke gets theirs. Whatever cell phone company you got, they get theirs. And you just kind of go down the list of man gets what's coming to him. Why can't God get what belongs to him? Amen. And why can't he get it first? Amen. Amen? Amen? He ought to get that first. That was one of the things I liked about Miss Minor. <coughs> she, would, she would always say, Well, Pastor, I know the Lord's been good to me. And I'm going to be sure I give to him what belongs to him. Amen. And she would just say that. And not only would she say it, she would do it. Amen. She would do it. And she would always talk about how God blessed her because she was so faithful. She was so faithful in her giving. And there are some people here in church who, when they know that they're not going to be here, when they know they're going to miss, they send their time. They do. They do that. And there are some people who are in this church who when they know they're not going to be here, they don't send their time. And it's too bad. Well, you know what? Really, it's too bad for you. 
Because when you really think about it, God doesn't need our money. He really doesn't. But he asked us to do it his way so that we can see how much he'll bless us when we obey. That's what he does. That's why he does it. And so I, I just want to challenge us. I want to encourage us to be faithful as we give and to do it with joy and pleasure. And believe me, God honors and blesses that kind of attitude. Did you know? Listen, Jesus talked more about money than he did any other subject. He, he, he talked more about money than he did about heaven. He talked more about money than he did about hell. He talked more about money than he did salvation. Because he knows. He knows. And he said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. <laughs> so he knows. He puts the finger on the very thing that could be hindering us from receiving what God wants to give us. And so I would encourage you to just take him at his word. Just take him at his word. And you just will begin to be so blessed in so many ways. And it doesn't necessarily always have to come in a financial way. God bless you in a whole lot of other ways. Amen? Amen. Amen. But he will. Believe me. He'll, 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 he'll take care of those finances. He certainly will do that. So that's what a kingdom man does. A kingdom man puts God first in his faith. And he puts God first in his Finances. And then the last thing I want to mention to you today is a kingdom man also puts God first in his family. Amen. All right? In his faith, in his finances, and in his family. Because as a kingdom man, I am responsible for the spiritual condition of my family. Are you getting that, fellas? As a kingdom man, I am responsible for the spiritual condition of my family. <clears throat> so now, what I try to do with our kids is instead of after we eat and clean up dishes and gather everybody together to try to have a time of prayer and devotion, instead of doing that, we get together while we still at the table. Amen. Before we clean up. Amen. What, what's wrong with that? Amen. Before we clean up. Because sometimes when they get done eating, they won't scatter. <laughs> and, 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 and the devil say, well, y'all tired. It's been a long day. You, 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 don't, you don't have to take time tonight. Now, I, I don't say we do that every night, but we're doing it more often. We really are. Because I believe, as a kingdom man, I'm responsible for the spiritual condition of my family. And when it comes to his family coming to church, a kingdom man leads the way. He leads the way. And what do you mean by that, Pastor? He leads the way. Well, watch this. Listen, here's what I mean. If help is needed getting the kids ready, kingdom man jumps right in. Amen. Amen. I ain't hear too many amens on that. <laughs> now, I know a lot of y'all don't even have younger kids anymore. You, you know, your kids just get themselves ready. And that's fine. That's good. If you got that, you really ain't got no excuse being here on time. Amen? Amen. Amen. I checked my household today. There is um, seven, eight. There's nine. There's nine in our house, y'all. Nine of us. And for the most part, we get here on time. And live almost 30 minutes away. Amen? Nine of us. Some of y'all is just one and two. And you don't live 30 minutes away. Amen? Amen. 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 
drag it in. <laughs> you didn't get eight people ready. You just had you. And you barely made it. Come on now. What's going on here, y'all? Huh? Are we giving God our best? I don't think we are. I really don't think we are. Tony Evans pointed this out. He said, he said, isn't it amazing how men especially will prepare and do all that they do to go to a football game to watch about 15 minutes of actual football. That's all it is. From the time the center hikes the ball to the time the official blows the play dead, you put all of that time together in an entire football game, the actual action is only about 15 minutes. And yet, the game lasts three hours. Right? It's three hours. And then Tony mentions that, don't count the time, it'll take you about an hour to get down to the stadium. Then you got to park. And, and, and so it was like, all together, if a guy goes to, let's say, a Bengals game, in that day, he will have taken up almost eight and nine or nine hours to watch 15 minutes of football. And yet, some guys can't spend an hour in church. But say, oh, how I love Jesus. Hmm. I wonder who you really love. <coughs> Amen? Amen? But we've got to put God first in our family. And a kingdom man does just that. Guess what? A kingdom man doesn't mind every now and then doing the dishes. Taking out the garbage. Helping keep the house clean. Come on, wives, get them elbows going. All right? Keep the house clean. Kingdom man doesn't mind doing that. Watch this. What about doing a load of laundry? Oh, Pastor, what are you saying? <laughs> a kingdom man doesn't mind that. And I see something, guy. I don't think I'm wanting to be a kingdom man. <laughs> Because, listen, a kingdom man, listen, is a man who serves. Amen. He serves. Amen. And if he can't serve in his own family, right. what kind of a kingdom man is he? Right. Amen? Amen? What kind of a kingdom man is he? Listen, folks, Jesus got down on his hands and knees and washed the dirty stinking feet of his disciples. That's right. That's right. And if the creator of the universe can get down on his knees mm -hmm. to serve, why should we think we should do anything less? <laughs> A kingdom man doesn't mind serving. Jesus said, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. He said, that's why he came. And I'll say this again, too. You are not serving the Lord by merely showing up on Sunday morning. That's not serving the Lord. And that applies to men and women. Too. That's not serving the Lord. You can serve him in many different ways and you serve him by serving others. Amen. That's how we serve him. When we serve others. And how we treat others is also how we treat Jesus. Mm -hmm. How we treat others is also how we treat Jesus. Pastor Evans said that the path to a better world starts with one kingdom man. Amen. And I'll say this and take it a step further. The path to a better family starts with one kingdom man. Amen. And 
then the path to a better church starts with one kingdom man. Yeah. <coughs> and that's why if heaven had a newspaper on the one edge section in bold black print you would see the words wanted kingdom man. That's what you would see. Now here's the thing though. You can't even think about being a kingdom man until you know the king. Do you know the king? Do you have a personal relationship with the king? And of course, the king is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the king. And if you don't have a right relationship with him, you can forget about being a kingdom man. It starts with him. It starts with him. If you trust him, he'll save you. And what he will do is he'll set up his kingdom in your heart. And he will rule as a loving, kind, gracious king. And guess what? You won't mind serving him. Amen. You really won't mind. Let's pray again. Father, thank you again that you've called us into your service. You've called us both men and women to serve you and to be about your business. And while we've been focusing these last couple of messages on the man, yet, Lord, I know that you desire also for the woman to have a servant's attitude and a servant's heart. And so I pray today for both men and women, boys and girls, Lord, that we would look at our lives, we would examine ourselves and see what it is and see where it is that we need to surrender more of our lives to you. And God, that we won't hold nothing back but that we'll put you first in our faith. And we'll put you first in our finances. And then, Lord, that we'll put you first in our family. And God, I just pray that you will touch the hearts of each person here and that we'll realize the joy and the privilege of serving you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you.